Hey guys, it's Tina here. Welcome back to another episode of Tina Tries It. In today's episode, I'll be trying a very unusual makeup sponge. If you haven't already, make sure you click subscribe below to stay updated with future videos. As some of you may know, I was recently in Japan for a few days for a beauty exhibition called Cosme Tokyo 2017. It was Japan's biggest cosmetic show and there was over 800 exhibitors. All of them showcased their latest new products, so I found a lot of cool products to try for my series this year. One of them being this really unique makeup sponge. It's made by a Korean manufacturer, so it's actually not out on the market at the moment. And I can't really tell you how much it costs, but I wouldn't say it's too expensive. It doesn't really have a name either, so I'm not sure what to really call it. Alfred said it kind of looks like a flame, but I think it kind of looks like a brush merged with a beauty blender, if you get what I mean. It's got like these like bristle things that's supposed to mimic a brush, but it's the texture of a beauty blender. Maybe we can call it the blender brush. What do you think? Let me know below. Now the guy at the exhibition told me that you just use it just like a beauty blender, so you need to wet it. So I'm just gonna dunk it in some water. It doesn't really get puffy like the sponge. So that's the sponge wet and it didn't really get any bigger or puff up like a beauty blender does. I feel like the latex is a little bit more dense so maybe it doesn't absorb a lot of water. I'm just going to squeeze out any of that excess water from the sponge. And yeah, it looks pretty much the same shape and I wouldn't say like it went any bigger. Not like when you wet the beauty blender, this thing puffs up. And just feeling the two next to each other, this one is definitely a different type of latex, so it's actually much more denser. Comparing the new sponge with the Beauty Blender, the size is pretty similar. This is a Beauty Blender without water, so it's actually not been wet, so this is the dry form. If I was to wet it, it'd puff up and be much bigger. This is the new sponge wet, so it hasn't really changed shape. The big difference between the two is this has a handle, which makes it cleaner when you apply your foundation. I feel like sometimes when I use the Beauty Blender, foundation does get on my fingers because I kind of switch sides. So if I use concealer on this end and foundation on this end, I'm kind of holding where the product is. So sometimes it does get a little bit messy and goes on my hand. So I feel that this product may be a bit cleaner to use because you're not really touching where the foundation is. The only other thing is I'm not really sure about the shape and all these like little latex flaps. I'm not too sure if that's going to make the application any better, but we'll see. Let's test it out. I'm going to test out the new sponge with my Shantikai Future Skin Oil-Free Gel Foundation. I'm going to grab a bit of this foundation and just pop it on the back of my hand. Now I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to apply the foundation on, but I'm just going to like grab a little bit of that using the side of it. So I've just grabbed a bit of foundation on the side of this sponge. As you can see, the sponge comes to a point. So I'm assuming you kind of just apply it on like this. I'm not sure if you really have to dab it in like a beauty blender, but let's try both. Oh, this is weird. I'm like just spreading it out first. Um, I'm not really loving the application so far. Let's try. Let's try dabbing it. Mm, I feel like that doesn't really work either because it just leaves streaks of foundation because of these little flaps here. So maybe you just have to swipe it and sweep it. It's not bad, it just takes a little bit of time to get used to. If I try the other side. The sponge itself does feel much more dense than a beauty blender. It feels a little bit harder on my skin. In terms of use, I think it works best when I just go like back and forth. Like this. I feel like it blends out much nicer than just going one direction. I feel like you have to go back and forth and really work it into the skin. I can't say I'm in love with this just yet because Again, it's just really bizarre using something so different. I'm used to just using the Beauty Blender and, and the point and just dabbing it. But now I feel like you have to really change the way you apply if you use this. 
Also, I feel like I'm using a lot of foundation compared to what I usually use with a normal brush or my sponge, like my beauty blender. I feel like, I don't know, I'm not getting like amazing coverage with this and I feel like I have to use a lot more foundation. A good thing about this sponge is if I do my eyebrows before, I could just really run it across there because of the line here, the angle makes it really precise. Unlike the Beauty Blender, I feel like sometimes I get the foundation on my brows but because I'm using a sweeping motion, I find that this sponge is good for that. I'm going to test out the sponge with my concealer. I'm using the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer in Light Warm. This time I'm going to apply the concealer onto my face. So I'm going to see how well it will blend the concealer out. This is a tricky bit. I really don't know what's the best way to use the sponge. I feel like with concealer, I tend to dab it in. Yeah, it works. So far, it blends the concealer out pretty well just using the dabbing motion. Let's see like under my eyes. Mm, I find it a little bit more difficult under the eyes. I feel like maybe I can just use this sweeping motion. It's kind of hard to work into that corner there. Usually with the Beauty Blender, I can just really use that point to blend it in, but I don't think I can do that with this. I think I'm just gonna have to use my finger. Yeah, it's not a great sponge to use under the eye. It's just a bit awkward and it doesn't really get into that inner corner too well. I think the only good feature about this is this curve here because it actually does fit under the eye quite well. However, it's not like pointy enough or dense enough to really work into that inner corner. Now with this, I don't know, it's just awkward. I don't know how to do this. Do I rub it? I pat it, I don't know. I just spread it out everywhere. So much for a highlight. Next, I'm just gonna grab a darker color to spot conceal. I've been getting some pimples lately. Don't know what's happening with my skin. Maybe I'm stressed or something. Okay, I'm dabbing it in and it works fine. You just gotta use one of the sides because it goes flat on the skin. So dabbing it in is just fine. Now I'm going to test it out with my cream contour. I'm using the Stiller Medium Shape and Shade Custom Contour Duo. Now because it's got these little flaps, I think maybe I can apply the contour with this. Let's see if it works, applying contour. Okay, this is not great. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> this was not a good idea. What am I doing? What am I doing? I just feel like I just got to go with it now. I've created three stripes instead of one. Just gotta go with it. I still have, okay, no. Nah. This is a disaster, <laughs> what am I doing? Ah! I've effed my makeup up, this is horrible. I don't know what to do. Do I just keep going? No, I'll use the other side. The other side is clean. Do not use this for contouring. I feel like apply the contour on with a brush or your fingers and then blend it out with this sponge or else you get these three stripes happening. Thank God this formula is super blendable. The next thing I'm gonna do is apply my By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. I'm wondering if you can actually bake using this sponge, because I know a lot of people use their beauty blender, right? So let's, let's put this baby to the test. I'm just grabbing a generous amount of powder onto my sponge. I feel a little bit nervous for some reason. I feel like this might not work, but I'm gonna bake under my eyes. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It just leaves these like bars or like these stripes that kind of reminds me of our window blinds, you know, those lines. You get me? You feel me? What powder? Let's try the other side. It, this is gonna be patchy, I just feel it. Mm. <laughs> This is so bizarre, this totally does not work for baking. You'll have patches of areas that are set and some that are not. This is a good look. This is like 2017 baking. You want those lines there. 
It's the new trend. What do you think? Okay, I'm just gonna buff it away. I look ridiculous. Just gonna buff that powder away. Now here is a close up of my skin. I felt like I had to work really hard to make this sponge work for me. But you know what, it doesn't look so bad. The results are okay. I just felt like it was really difficult applying the foundation, the contour especially, and baking, just, just don't bake with this sponge. Now it's time to rate this product. I really don't know what to call it. Let's just call it the Flame Brush Blender Sponge because that's what it looks like. It looks like all of those. I'm gonna rate this product a five out of 10. It's not the best sponge out there and it's definitely not the worst. It's just kind of difficult to use. I feel like you do need to really play with it and try to find how you can best use it. For me, I feel like applying foundation back and forth works best. Mm, you can blend in concealer by using a dabbing motion, but you're not gonna get a very precise blend if you're working under the eyes. With contouring, don't try to apply your contouring with this. Apply the contouring cream on your face first and then blend it out. That works better. And just don't, don't even try to bake with this because it's just gonna be horrible. Let me know what you think about this. Could this be a new hot product for 2017? What do you think? Before I go, I just wanna give a big thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. I've teamed up with Audible and they're offering everyone who's watching this video a 30 day free trial. Audible has an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original shows, news, comedy, and more. Audible is offering a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial. Just go to audible.com slash Tina. That's audible.com slash Tina. Sign up for free and download your free title and start listening. I've been listening to The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. I love it because it's all about escaping the 9-to-5 job, living more and working less. So if you guys are needing some inspiration, maybe you want to check it out too. It's that simple. Anyways, that's it to this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Make sure you click subscribe below to stay updated with future videos and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.